Hey guys, my name is Aaron Chavez, and I just wanted to introduce you before I got into this final project here. Uh, I'm a 22-year-old accounting student. Uh, I live here in California, and uh, I learned about the academy when I applied to WGU and jumped right on the opportunity, and here I am a couple weeks later with my final project. Okay? Well, I hope uh, you enjoy. Let's start with the goal. My ultimate goal is to become a certified public accountant. When the pandemic started, I was a fresh out of high school graduate. I wanted more, but didn't know what that looked like. I am here three years later, more motivated than ever to chase my goals. My why? My why is simple. I wanted to make my family proud. I have big aspirations and my family has been nothing but supportive, even when I did not deserve it. To repay their support, I want to show them how successful I can be. PACA, I believe, is a great stepping stone to get into it. This class doesn't just teach you, but gives you valuable information to make your goals even more attainable. Managing emotions. One of the first skills you learn in PACA is to identify and manage emotions. They break down identi identifying emotions well. It all starts with your canon event. For those who haven't watched the Spider-Man movie, a canon event is something that has to happen. This something has to be a situation that is high stress or nerve wracking. For Spider-Man, it is the death of his uncle or dad. Your amygdala then sends stress hormones throughout your body to let it know it may be in a bad situation. This will trigger a bile response from you. There are four major bile responses, fight, flight, appease and freeze. Personally, I either freeze from shock or fight against anyone for the sake of my opinion. Not only does PACA give you a way to identify these emotions, but it shows you how to manage them as well. It starts with the acronym STEP or stop, take a breath, evaluate, proceed. This is a very good game plan to follow as you start to identify the emotions you are feeling. In a sense, STEP summarizes the mindfulness we use to manage emotions. We use mindfulness to assess how we are feeling and why. This is important because this is the first part of finding solutions. I mean, after all, managing emotions is kind of the whole purpose is to find solutions. We can get to the root of this and find out what the problem is. If done right, STEP will help you find the best course of action, whether it be happy, sad, angry, or any other emotion. I've been using these recently learned skills a lot more in my personal life to overcome hurdles in my path. While I have not perfected it, I think it will come more and more easier to me with time. Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, the simplest way to put self-efficacy is if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. It will be your mindset that will affect the result. If you start to think that you cannot do an assignment, you probably won't do it. However, if you start to think that while it is difficult, you will continue with effort until you get it done because of, you will get it done because of your mentality. Having a positive outlook might just mean to take a break, break or practice step. Or as simple as taking a big deep breath you will be surprised how much a different outlook can change results. Don't get me wrong, the path to success isn't a short one. It's a difficult one, if anything. You will still have struggles and still have doubts, but even when you do, progressing with an optimistic attitude will get you to the finish line. A way PACA teaches you to keep progressing is with SMARTER goals. SMARTER goals is another acronym, and if you're anything like me, you've noticed PACA loves its acronyms. SMARTER Goals stands for Specific, Measurable, Actionable, Relevant, Time-Bound, Evaluate, and Reward. SMARTER Goals will have you choose something specific, not something that is vague and easily forgotten, but specific, like, I want to run a mile under six minutes regardless of the weather. This will make this goal more memorable. After you have a specific goal, you have to have it measurable. How are you going to measure the progress? 
like for my six minute example, it may be keeping track of how long it took you to run that mile every time. Actionable is what are we going to do to get this done? Maybe that will just mean we'll try to run every day to keep us on track. It doesn't have to be the mile, but as long as we're keeping on track, that's what we want to measure. Relevant means to make sure it's relevant to what you want to do in the future. For our, for our analogy, it could mean you want to run races and want to be able to beat a certain time. Time bound is just having you consider a reasonable timeline. This means you have to have something done by a certain amount of time. Evaluate means to take time to see how it's going. Maybe you're when you're done running, you evaluate your muscles and feel you, how your muscles feel and you realize they are super tight. You need to stretch before you start running. Reward is my favorite part. It is an incentive you give yourself to motivate yourself. It could be an ice cream or a movie night or maybe just a nap. Anything that will get you to keep running in the middle of the mile. Following the smarter goal system will help you make more educated goals that are reasonable and attainable. Once you meet your smart goal, it is only then when you realize your self-efficacy. Explicit and implicit bias. Unfortunately, we all have biases. There are two types of bias, explicit and implicit. Explicit is when you are aware of this bias and you are portraying it. It could be an opinion or even an extreme stereotype. When you are actively showing a bias and are aware of it, it will be called explicit. Explicit bias is hurtful actions done purposely. Implicit, on the other hand, is a lot more subtle. Most of the time, you won't notice it. These types of biases can affect your learning and even your understanding. This bias could be a teacher or a boss that you have. It usually comes from your upbringings or even the culture you were raised in. The community or the media can make you have a bias as well. The human brain goes off instinct, so a bias can affect you and you wouldn't even notice. I had a bias not to take notes, and for years, I neglected this important part of my education. As you get older and the classes get more difficult, it is more and more important to take these notes. I then realized I just didn't like a certain type of note taking style and could record lecture, late lectures and take them on my own time. This bias hurt my education journey when I just needed to address the problem and figure out what would work for me. Communication skill. Once we started getting a good idea of managing emotions and what bias means, we started to learn about communication. Once we understood how we ourselves felt, we cannot assume others already knew. While communicating is to talk, it is important to listen. This is important to emotions because once you have a good grasp on what they are, you can use communication skills to let others know as well. Communicating is a back and forth in an effort to express thoughts and emotions. Well, words come out of a person's mouth, you need to listen and try to understand what they want you to acknowledge. Basically, don't, basically the, there's three methods of communication we focus on. There's symbolic interactionalism, communication accommodation, and nonviolent communication. Symbolic interactionalism is to communicate without words but signals. It can be as simple as a stop sign. Even without the word stop on it, when, or even if it's written all over, we all know exactly what it means. Communication accommodation is to code switch. We all use different ways to talk to people throughout our lives, and each has an appropriate way to talk to them. Coworkers and bosses will be more professional, while friends and family will be more casual and relaxed, on the other hand. Nonviolent communication is when you use empathy to deal with difficult conversations. We do this in a calmer and relaxed manner in hopes to come out with an agreement. Communication is one of the most important parts of PACA. Interpersonal skills. Interpersonal skills is something else we uh, touched base on at our PACA cohort. Interpersonal skills can be a vast array of soft skills. It could be creativity, innovation, leadership, communication, etc. In PACA, my favorite we talked about was a growth mindset. The idea of a growth mindset is to absorb information and not to be negligent towards learning opportunities. It is using the experiences we've been through to change how we look and process things in our brains. Learning about the world around you will help you understand it more. A person with a growth mindset will thrive compared to those who don't. 
Having skills like this can help improve personal and professional relationships inside and outside of workplaces, school, home, anywhere you find yourself, as well as make you more competitive in the job market. What PACA has taught me. PACA has taught me a lot in a short span we spent together. It was a class where I felt like everything I learned was useful. I learned about goal setting and how to stay on it. I was taught how to identify my emotions and how to manage them. I learned to be cautious of biasness. I learned about different methods of communication. I was exposed to interpersonal skills and how they make me a sharper guy. However, the most important thing I learned was that I can do it. I see that if I set small goals to get to the end game, I will get to the end game. I have been scared to take that jump, but now I can't wait to take it. From here, where? From here, I will start WGU in August, something I wish would come sooner. I will dedicate myself solely to my studies in hopes to have a bachelor's in accounting by June 2024. I will use smarter goals to make sure I accomplish it and don't worry, there will be a reward at the end as well. <laughs> While PACA has officially ended, I cannot wait to use the skills I learned with the academy. Thank you to those who listened to my presentation and I hope you either have learned or related to something.